Today I'm going to show you how to paint fall leaves in watercolors. I was inspired by walking around my yard today and seeing all the leaves fall from the trees. So I thought this is what I would paint for you. So let's sit back and relax. Okay, so I've got my Arches watercolor paper, my Windsor Newton watercolors, my paper towel, my brushes, my water, my palette, and a number two pencil. Um, I'm gonna be drawing out the leaves today. Normally, I don't draw out what I'm painting. Um, I just kind of freehand it, but today I'm gonna to be drawing them out um, very lightly. So, um, so grab a pencil and you can just lightly sketch out your leaves. I'm gonna do a couple different leaves on here, so it's not gonna be one big painting. It's just gonna be a couple different samples of different leaves, just to show you. So I thought I would be painting leaves because it's fall outside and the trees around here are starting to uh, drop their leaves and they're changing colors and it's beautiful out there. So I was a little inspired walking around today. So I'm gonna be painting leaves for you. Okay, so I'm gonna be starting out with, I don't even know what kind of leaves these are to tell you the truth. Maple leaves maybe. So I'm gonna lightly sketch it out here like that. So I've got five, I've got my stem and then I've got five um, where it branches out the veins. So, let's see. I hope you can see this. I'm drawing it out lightly so I don't have too much to erase. All right. And then I was kind of studying the leaves before. Um, they have like these two, they have the point and then like the two peaks here, but some of them have, have three peaks, some of them have one. So it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter um, how many you have going on here. So that could be one leaf. Um, then I'm gonna draw out a different leaf. I don't know, I think, I'm not even sure what kind of leaves these are. Maple leaves, I have no idea. So I start out with the stem. And then this is more of like a organic leaf. It's got the round. I like to do one side and then the other, um, but you could do one whole side first and then go to the other side. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and then I'm going to do more of a round, actually an oval shaped leaf. And then I'm going to just do an oval. it's got the veining, it's kind of got a point on the outside. So it, it come to a little point, wherever that little vein is right here, it have like a little point. So when you're painting, just remember to kind of peek it out a little bit there. All right. And I might add a few more, but these are the three um, leaves that I wanted to do for you today. So let's start with these. I'm going to be doing um, more fall colors, the oranges and the yellows. So I am using my cadmium um, yellow and this one is cadmium red pal. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put a little bit of water on my leaf. Not too much. You don't want it to be pu puddled. And I'm going to take this in sections. So I'll do like that section first. So I get I get it kind of wet.
And you could do reds, yellows, greens, brown. Just play around with it and have fun. And I'm gonna bring in a little bit of that cadmium yellow on the other side. And then you can always go in and erase your pencil marks later if your paint is not covering them. And I'm just gonna drop a little bit of that yellow into the orange. And make sure your, your little points are nice and crisp. So if you have to go over it a little bit later on so that you got these nice points. section. I'm going to skip that section right there in the middle just because I don't want it to, I want it to bleed a little bit but not completely bleed. So if I did it right now, this one section next to that, it would totally bleed into that other section. I don't want that look right now. Actually, I'm going to throw a little bit of that orange right into that leaf too. And if it's not spreading as much as you want it to, you can help it along a little bit. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I am using a size five in my Grumbacher uh, paintbrushes. Okay. And if you wanna just spread that out a little bit, you can just use the paint that's already there, or you can apply more. Just applying some water. Okay, Put a little orange. Maybe I want to bring a little orange into some of these tips here a little bit too. So you can always dab a little bit of orange into the tips. cadmium yellow and if you want to bring in some greens and reds maybe I'll bring in some greens on this one too okay add a little more orange down here and if it's not vibrant enough for you um, you can always wait till it dries and then go back and add another layer. You can probably hear my dog in the background. I think somebody is at the front door. Okay, so that looks good. Now I'm gonna go back in and wet this part here. Okay. And see how it's bleeding a little bit, but not too bad. So that's totally fine. So I was wetting this section right here. So try not to get it too wet, because otherwise your paint will just puddle and not spread the way you want it to. But you want it damp enough. And then I'm gonna throw in a little bit more of that cadmium orange. Pretty. 
That's why I love watercolor so much. It's so unpredictable. You can lay down some paint somewhere and then it just starts to spread and you have no idea what it's gonna end up looking like. Versus acrylic and oils, wherever you put the paint down, that's where it stays. All right, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of green. I think this is my sap green. Just kind of lay it down gently in little sections here and there. Um, if you lay the, the orange, the green on top of the orange, um, it will start to turn brown on you, which is okay because leaves eventually turn brown. Um, but if that's not the look you're going for, you don't want to place the green on top of the orange. But if you place it on top of the yellow, it looks more like a lime, a lime color. And if you want it more vibrant, you can always um, wait till it dries and add another layer. And I'm gonna bring a little bit of green on this side too. Just so it looks like it's flowing together. Okay. That's really pretty. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and wet this side. I've got the windows open today, it's such a beautiful day, but the wind is strong. I don't know if you hear my wind chimes out there. Okay. One of my trees is already losing its leaves. The other ones are not, but one is. But it turned yellow already. So it's really pretty. And then the ground is really pretty because then the ground is yellow. All right. Come in and make my little points again. I like when they're nice, crisp little points. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow down here. And blend it in. And you can leave a little bit of white space where your veining is also if you want. We're gonna go over that with like a little bit more of a brown tone in a little while, but you can leave it white right now if you want to. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and wet this last section. too much water on my brush so it's okay you just pick up the water and wipe it off on your paper towel and some yellow. Wow, that's really pretty. I'm liking it. All right. 
We're gonna move on to the next leaf and let this one dry a little bit. Then we can add a little bit more. Actually, you know what? I wanna add a little bit of green over here too, just so there's green on this side of the leaf also. Okay, I'm gonna make this one a little bit more of a brownish orange, yeah. So the brown I'm using is Burnt Umber. And I think I'm also gonna throw in a little bit of this one too, which this one is Burnt Sienna. All right, so I'm using Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna and still my pale orange. So I am going to do this one a little bit different. I am going to do one whole half first on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and get half of my leaf nice and wet here. And you can move up in size on your paintbrush if you want to. Like I said before, I'm using a 5. If you want to jump up to a, a 10 or a 8, um, that's fine also. But I'm just going to stick with my 5 for today. And again, you don't want to oversaturate your paper. You just want to get it damp. All right. So I'm going to start with my burnt sienna. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of my burnt sienna here and there. This is my favorite time of the year. Everything's so colorful and the weather's starting to get crisp outside. You can leave the windows open. You don't need the air conditioning on. You don't need the heat yet. This is my favorite time. Okay, and I'm adding some of my cadmium yellow again. And you can kind of blend the two together. And I think I'm gonna throw in a little bit of that Umber. And we'll do some veining later, so don't worry about the veining right now. of that burnt sienna though. A little bit more of that orangey, rusty look. Okay, let that side dry. And I'm gonna go on to my other side. It's okay if the other side touches it and it starts to bleed through a little bit. Totally fine. All right, so I'm going to pick up my cadmium yellow again. And just place it here and there. And then I'm gonna pick up my burnt Sienna.
these colors are actually um, covering up my pencil marks a little bit more than on the lighter leaf. So I don't think I'll have to erase as much on this one, if anything. And if it's not bleeding as much as you want it to, like I said before, just kind of help it along, just push it a little bit. And then you can kind of blend them together a little bit. I like the way that looks. That's really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna let that one dry a little bit now. So, let's go on to this leaf. And this one here, I think I'm gonna do more of a green and a red. So, I will pick up my, actually, let's wet the, the leaf first. So, I am going to just wet in little sections. Up. What is this? And this is my alizarin crimson. So I'm going to pick up some of that. I'll let that bleed down a little bit. And then all these little points here, I'm going to come in with a drier brush later and fix up some of my little points. Add a little bit of my sap green again. And where the two meet, it kind of turns more of a brownish color. So um, it's okay, that's what you're getting when you're red and your green meet, because that's normal. When you mix red and green together, um, you usually get a brown tone. This is just the first coat anyway, so. I'm gonna put down a little bit more of my red. I'll start making some of those little points. because that one that water I was using before is a little too orange right now and I don't really want oranges in this leaf okay. and it's okay if you leave a little bit of white space where your veining is gonna go This green is, what is this green? Viridian. So I'm using also a little bit of the Viridian green. And it's just a little bit of a darker. It's got a little bit more blue in it. Wow, I like that. Okay. off my brush and I'm gonna go on to the next section and you could even take it in smaller sections if you want to you could do one whole side of the leaf if you want to there's no there's no right or wrong in how to do this this is just what I'm choosing to do today all right and I am putting the red more on the outside of the leaf and I'm keeping with the green more on the inside. So I'm letting it bleed, and I'm trying to make those little points as I go along, but I can crispen those up later. my 
green again. And that's the sap green. See how the sap green is a little bit more limey? to the other side. And here again, it's okay if it bleeds. It's turning pink because some of my red is bleeding through. That's okay. And I like the way that looks when the green and the red mix. Kind of like when the green and the orange mix, you get more of a, a brownish tone. Same thing here. But these are leaves, and like I said before, they're gonna all turn brown anyway, so it's, it's okay if you're getting that. I'm gonna go on to the next section. some of the red on the other side since I've got it on my brush already rather than washing it off and wasting it I'm just dabbing it on the other side because I wanted to add a little bit more red over there anyways get that kind of brownish tone going on there all right pick up some of my sap green again And as you can see, I'm leaving some of the veining um, white for right now. You, like I said before, you don't have to do that. starting to turn a little green which is okay because it's gonna be a green and red leaf anyways You could just play around with this all day if you wanted to. You just kind of have to know when to stop. When it feels right, that's when you stop. Otherwise, you can just keep adding green and red or whatever colors you're using. All right. And then my last 
last little section of this leaf. So I know some of you might be confused what kind of channel this is. Um, I am a, I'm an artist, so I paint in pretty much everything. Um, watercolors, acrylics, I've done oils. Um, and I'm also um, a furniture, I also, I also paint furniture and I sell it. So sometimes you're gonna see a watercolor video on here, sometimes you're gonna see a painting furniture um, tutorial on here, so. Don't be confused, I do both. And I didn't want two YouTube channels, I just wanted one YouTube channel, so I'm trying to go back and forth a little bit. Painting furniture, and then also doing my, um, my watercolors. Because they're both my passions. So you'll see a little bit of both. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and start making the veining. I'm gonna use the burnt umber again. I'm gonna go down to a size zero in the Grumbacher. Um, just for my veining. All right, and the leaf is pretty dry. Okay, so I am just gonna start going down with a nice steady hand. And if you leave some of the white, I don't know if you can see that, but I left a little bit of the white there, it's okay because it looks like a, a little highlight. And then you're gonna wanna go all the way down and make the bottom of the stem a little bit wider because it just fell off a branch. So the bottom of the stem is a little bit wider. And then you can pull in your veining on all. Now, if this was still damp, your veining would be bleeding and that's totally fine. You can have it bleeding as well. I find when I pull my brush away from my painting, from my body, it goes on a little smoother. When I'm pulling it close to my body, it's a little bit more shaky. So you might wanna pay attention to how, how shaky your hand is. Um, you might like the feel of actually pulling the brush towards yourself. I find that when I, when I like for these veinings, when I, go from the middle and I I brush it out it goes on a little bit straighter for me so you might want to pay attention to how it goes on for you what feels more comfortable all right and then you know what I think I do want it to bleed a little bit this one looks a little bit too thick so I'm gonna bleed it out a little bit it up a little bit just bleed it out so what I'm doing is I'm just going in with a damp brush a damp brush and I'm just going in on one side one side of my line and I'm blending it out and it kind of thins up your line a little bit there all right and actually I want to do the same thing up here too see how this is a little bit thicker up of a line up here I'm not happy with that. So I am gonna take a damp brush and just kind of go back and forth until it blends in a little bit. There, like that. And then if you want, you can even make even all those other little veins. where my paper is still a little damp, it 
bleeds in a little bit and where my paper is dry, it goes on crisper. And there's no right or wrong. And I'm gonna actually bleed these out a little bit more. Oops, a little bit too much water on my brush. So I'm gonna take my paper towel and damp it off. Oops. I'm just gonna soften them up a little bit. And if you don't wanna do all the veins, you don't have to. You could just leave the main five that I had done on this leaf. You don't have to go in and put all these little veins if you don't want to, if you don't like that look but I think they're a little too harsh, so I am just taking a damp brush and I'm blending them in. too much paint on my brush. I'm just going to go over it a little bit, that's all. Maybe just lighten it up a little bit. You don't have to make that many veins. And I'm just going over them a little bit. Soften them up a little bit. There. That's pretty. You know what? I think I'm actually going to pull in a little bit more of that burnt umber down here on the bottom of the leaf. And I might even take a little Payne's Gray later and just give it a little bit more depth. That's my dog choking in the background. Yeah, it's always a good thing. Okay, so let's go back to this leaf. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the burnt umber again, still using my size zero. And I'm gonna go in and do a little bit of veining. And actually, I am gonna turn my leaf so that I could pull it going away. Oh, and be careful that you don't smudge your painting you had just done. Sometimes I, I do that, I put my hand down on the page and I'll smudge what I just did. So just be aware that you don't do that. Okay. And then it's got little veins that go to each little part. Like that. 
sorry I'm, I'm getting you all dizzy turning my paper. Like I said before, it's just whichever way you need to make your line, whether it's pulling it towards you or away from you, it's whatever feels more comfortable that you think you'll get a steadier line. Okay, I'm gonna thicken up my stem down on the bottom here. This leaf has got all sorts of little um, little veins coming from that main stem. So I'm going to add a few. I don't want to add too many. You can add as many as you want, but I'm not going to add too many. I think it starts getting confusing to your eye then. So I'm going to add just a few here and there. Not too dark. a little too dark. So I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. There. And then I'm going to add some veining on this side. really pretty. Um, I might go in a little bit later and deepen up. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do that now. I'm going to still take my burnt umber and I am going to darken up some of these little edges of the leaf here. You don't want to outline your leaf because then it starts to look too much like a cartoon. Um, but you do want to add a little bit of depth to it. So go in and darken up some spots and then just blend it in and it gives it a little bit more depth paper wet when you do this so you're working wet on wet or you could just put wet on dry right now my leaf is pretty dry and I'm just going in with my wet paint you have a little bit more control over your paint that way um, if it was wet on wet you don't have much control the paint just kind of spreads wherever it wants to but if you want a little bit more control then work wet on dry and then you can always add a little bit more water like this just to blend it out a little bit Same thing to the other side. And if you wanted to deepen up your yellows or your orange tone in here, you could do that too. And actually, I might deepen up the orange, the burnt sienna.
All right, I'm gonna go in and um, add a little bit of that burnt sienna to it. Just to deepen up some sections here. it in. So now let's do the veining on this last leaf. Oops, and I dropped some water on my first leaf. Just damp it off. All right. I'm going to do the same thing with the burnt umber. bottom of your stem make it a little thicker because it just came off the branch and then this leaf's got veining to all those little points we had made so you could just go from the main vein all the way out to all those little points If you want to do more veins coming off of these, you could do that too. deepen up a little bit of that green. I'm going to go back to my bigger size 5 brush just to come in with a little bit more green. Deepen it up in the middle here. And then you can blend it out. on the other side too. And then if you want, you can start covering up some of your white spots. Or you can leave some of them. It looks really pretty sometimes just with a little highlight. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little bit of my Payne's Gray. I move back to my size zero brush. I'm taking a little bit of my Payne's Gray. Dab it off. You don't want too much on there. And just 
of some of the veins, not all of them, but you can go over a little bit with like a shaky hand. Just, you want like a broken up line. So it like, you've got a little bit here, a little bit there. So it's not every vein, it's just a few. So I'm picking it up, I'll put it back down, and then I'll just do a few of the veins. Not all of them. Add just a little bit of Payne's Gray here and there just to make it pop from your page if, a little bit if you want to. Like I said before, you don't want to outline your piece because then it starts to look too much like a cartoon, but you do want it to pop off your page. So it's almost like you're adding a little bit of a shadow behind it. Just really delicate here and there. Okay, and do the same thing with the other one. Just want to make sure that your your leaf is dry. And here again, you don't have to do every. certain little areas again if you want. So then my veining up there disappeared when I added the darker brown up on top. So I'm just kind of adding a little Payne's gray to some of those veins up on top. And then if you think that your line is a little too harsh, just blend it in. Take a clean, damp brush and just start blending it in a little bit. So it's not as clean of a line. one. Actually, 
I like to pull away from my body, so I'm gonna go like this. Some of them are too harsh, just go over it again with a clean brush. Just a little bit of water. Okay. And then I think I'm going to do a little bit of the Payne's Gray more towards the outside too. Just to give it a little bit of a shadow. Not everywhere. And then from here, you can just kind of touch up whatever you want. If you want to add more veining, or if you think some of them are a little bit too dark still, just go back in with a damp brush, pick it up with some water. You can always dab it off. This one's a little too harsh up here. Okay, so I switched over to my number 10 uh, brush, and I'm taking a little Payne's Gray. I'm thinking we're gonna put a little bit of a shadow. I was debating if I was gonna do the shadow, but I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow behind these leaves, just so they don't look like they're floating on my page here. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and put a shadow on uh, one side of the leaves. Kind of think about where your light source is coming from. So if my light source is coming from the left, I've got the shadow on the right side. So I'm just taking some Payne's Gray and I'm just doing a little light wash of it behind my behind my leaves here. So and then if it's too harsh of a line just go in with a damp brush and Just blend it out a little bit. There, see how it kind of lifts it off? It kind of looks like it's shadowing the, the page here. I'll do this one up here too. And I'll put a little bit of a shadow behind the stem here too. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and do this leaf. And you can make your shadow as thin or as thick as you want. All right. So it kind of looks like it's on the page here. So see how it's got just a very light little shadow here on this one side. Let's see if I can make that a little darker. It's a little too dark. There. And then if it's too dark, just pick it back up with your brush. Like that. And I'll put a little
little shadow on this one. And you can make your shadow as dark as you want. It doesn't have to be as light as mine. It could be a lot, a lot darker. Perfect. All right, I think I'm gonna do a little bit more shadow on this one. Kind of in here a little bit. I didn't do the stem. good. Blend this out a little bit. Blend that out a little bit. There. So I did the shadows all on the right side. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little something. And for more up-to-date videos, please subscribe to this channel. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Have a great day. Bye.